Hi everybody and welcome to another awesome tutorial. My name is Dawn and I am with nerdygirlcreative.com. Nerdy Girl Creative is a place where you can create, learn, and share graphic design ideas and projects as well as get awesome design assets and a lot of freebies. This week we're going to learn how to create realistic watercolor edges on something that is not normally, you know, that doesn't necessarily have that effect on it. In Photoshop, we can create this effect using a few simple techniques on, you can use it with typography, you can use it on any kind of shapes, and you know, it gives us a realistic watercolor edge effect. Um, so I'm gonna show you how to do this effect right here where it is um, watercolor um, typography. We've just have regular normal typography. If I just go ahead and click off of it, you can see it's just a white text sitting on top of a watercolor texture, which is nice in itself, but you know, it doesn't actually have that feel of realism to it that you maybe really need for your project. And you know, it's, we're going to easily create it with an outer glow. And then I'm going to show you an opposite effect where, you know, we're going to make it look like you actually watercolor painted the type that we're looking at. Um, using an inner glow. So you get this realistic effect that the watercolor has pooled along the outside of your type. Um, and like I said, it works on shapes as well, pretty much anything you would like to use this for. I'm gonna go ahead and file new. And I'm gonna just work in a thousand by a thousand pixels. And the resolution, I'm going to put it 300 just so you guys can see. All right, and the watercolor texture that we're going to be working with is a watercolor texture that I have in a watercolor texture pack. It's my soft watercolor texture pack, which you can find over at my website or you can find at uh, creativemarket.com. So we're going to be working in uh, my soft watercolor texture pack. We're going to go to the soft circles. I'm going to get the PNG file and we're going to be working with soft circle number nine, which is this nice, beautiful blue color we have. So I'm going to go ahead and hit place. Now it's going to size this image to the size of my artboard, um, but this image is actually twice the size of this. So it has a very, it's a very high resolution photo and um, very large. So I'm going to go ahead and just hit okay. And then we are going to go ahead and put our type out there. So I am working in Boutique Script, which is a font that I got for free over on creativemarket.com. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you really quickly. So every week they have six free goods that you can get over here on Creative Market. Um, and it's by some really amazing designers. Um, every week they have a font uh, sometimes you get two, like this one has two in it. Um, they're really, really good, uh, great free design assets. Um, and I also sell over on Creative Market. So this is my shop over here, uh, creativemarket.com slash nerdygirlcreative. And it has all of my items that I have for sale as well. So go ahead and check that out. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and go ahead and type out watercolor. I'm just using it as white, um, so it shows up really nicely. And what we're gonna do to create the watercolor edges on the outside is we're going to create an outer glow. So you can come down here to your um, effects panel and find outer glow, or you can do the shortcut way and double click on your layer, and then the layer style panel will pop out for you. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and hit outer glow. And as you can see, we've got some default settings that you know are already here. We're gonna go ahead and mess with all of these settings. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to change my um, blending mode to color burn. I'm going to bring my opacity all the way up to 100. We're gonna make sure that we're clicked on um, this first option here. We don't need a gradient. So, and then I'm gonna just choose a color from the inside of the document here. And then as you can see, you can already start to see that it's got sort of what we're looking to get. So we're gonna go ahead and hit okay. And you wanna make sure that your technique is on softer and your contour, usually the contour is set to this default like straight, straight across. You kinda want to um, use a slightly curved one. You can come in here and sort of mess around with these different um, 
contour shapes and it gives you a different effect. So as you can see, it kind of gives, you know, some interesting things. You can play around with these and find really what you want. Sometimes you want to go kind of crazy, but um, we're going to go ahead and stick with this one. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in and we are going to sort of mess around with the size and the spread. So as you can see, when I pull the size up, it really pushes the effect far. We don't want it to be super out of control, but I kind of want to see how, you know, if I pulled it back, you can kind of get just the edge. Nothing else is touching, you know, and that's kind of a nice effect and it, it works, but I kind of want it, you know, realistically watercolor kind of pools together. So, you know, it gets a little bit, you know, heavier as things get around it, around each other. So, um, realistically, I kind of want it to be sort of a little bit, you know, further out so that they kind of touch a little. And the spread you can mess with, it just pushes it out, you know, the further you go, the harsher it's going to kind of look. So, you know, we want a soft feather effect, so just kind of pull it down, keep it around 15-ish eh, is good. And for the opacity, you can, I think this looks kind of nice the way it is, but actually just to give it a softer kind of effect, we're going to pull back the opacity just to around 88 or so, and then hit OK. So we have the first way to sort of fake the watercolor effect out. So. Like I said, it kind of looks like you painted in, you know, your script with your masking fluid and then sort of painted around, you know, with your watercolors. Um, so this is a really nice effect. So we're going to go the opposite effect now and we're going to do it so that it looks like we have painted, you know, in watercolor, the word watercolor here that we have. And the reason this font is really nice is because it has like all these really nice little details. It is a brush font. So some of the you know, the areas, it's got little areas that shine through and poke through, which make this a really great font for this effect. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this layer. So you can go ahead and grab the layer and come down here to make new layer, or you can do the shortcut, which is command or control J on the keyboard. And I'm going to turn the bottom layer off and then I'm just going to bring it up here above the type. And then I'm just going to create a simple clipping mask by right clicking and then hitting clipping mask. And then as you can see, it looks really good the way it is right now. Um, I've shown this technique in a quick skills tutorial before on how to, you know, add different textures to typography. And now I'm going to take it a step further. And instead of just placing, you know, the, the watercolor texture on top of it, we're going to recreate the, you know, give it the effect that you actually painted it in watercolor. So we're just going to come down here to a type again. And I'm going to double click it again to bring out my uh, effects layer style panel. And then I'm going to go ahead and click inner glow. And it already is set to kind of what I wanted it to be, but I'm going to mess with these so that, you know, we can kind of play around. So you'll set your um, blending mode to color burn. And I push this up all the way to 100. Um, it gives you the most that you can work with and you can always, always pull back on it. So, you know, you kind of, sometimes you want to start at the furthest spectrum of what you're working on and then you kind of scale back till you get the desired effect that you like. And we want to make sure that our technique is set softer and we have a different contour on here. So for the, the slight long contour, um, again, mess with these a little bit and you can kind of get interesting effects. This one is sort of like the color is pooled really heavily on the inside and it's almost, you know, lighter on the outside, which is kind of an interesting, it looks very like wet. It, it's, it gives it a very, very wet feel to it. Um, and then you can just kind of play around see which one you like, but this one kind of gives us the best, you know, effect for what we're going for. Um, you can mess with the size for the inner glow. You kind of push it a little bit and then it just kind of takes over. So you have to be a little bit gentle on what you put this at. So I'm actually just going to put it at 10. I think it's a good. And you can add noise, which gives a little bit of a texture grainy kind of feel. Um, it's a little hard to see right this second, but. So you see how it kind of pixelates things a bit. The more noise you get, the more texture it's going to add. 
Um, so you can, you know, add a little bit of noise. It's not strictly necessary, but sometimes when you're working and you have maybe like a textured colored, you know, like a textured paper background, you might want to do this just a little so that it'll blend in a little better. But I'm just going to leave it at zero. And as again, you want to have it on, you don't want the gradient, you want on the regular. And then you can just pick a color from the inside of your watercolor and it gives you the effect right away. All right, so that's looking good. So again, just to show you, the, you know, the difference that it makes is I'm gonna go ahead and just click off the inner glow and show you the difference. While this is very beautiful and soft, um, it kind of has like, you know, an ocean feel to it. It's, you know, once you click on the inner glow, you can definitely have a noticeable difference. It looks a little bit more realistic, less flat, more dynamic. Um, so it, it's a really great effect to, you know, fake it for uh, anything you want to do in Photoshop. Um, and I'm going to show you also, I'm going to place another colored texture on the background. We're going to use soft circle number six, which is this nice yellow green. And what I'm going to do is going to pull it behind here. This actually turns off my clipping mask. Cause... And if I go ahead and hit OK, now I still have the inner glow and the outer glow showing. So you can kind of turn the outer glow off, turn the inner glow off, turn the outer glow on. It kind of gives you different effects that's, you know, really fun to play with. Um, I kind of like just, you know, leaving the outer glow off and doing with the inner glow. Um, and it gives you this really interesting, awesome, you know, watercolor effect that, you know, it would be really hard to recreate normally. Um, not that it's impossible, but, <laughs> um, this actually is definitely a lot quicker. Um, so instead of, you know, having to break out your masking fluid and painstakingly paint inside, um, this is a very quick and easy way to get that beautiful effect. Um, and it was really not that difficult. It was a couple steps, really. I hope everybody really enjoyed this tutorial. We learned how to recreate realistic watercolor edges. You can use this with typography or shapes or pretty much any project that you're wanting to use this technique on and you get beautiful, amazing results. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to these videos. I create a new freebie or tutorial every week. So if you have any suggestions for what you would like to see next, um, leave me a comment below or go over to nerdygirlcreative.com and send me an email. Go out there and create something amazing.